My name is Gordon Goldsboro of the Manitoba Historical Society. And I'm Morgana Mallion, a local historian and researcher. Together, we're teaming up to learn more about the rich history of this province. And explore heritage sites that are definitely off the beaten path. This is Hidden Manitoba. In this episode, we're visiting the ghost town of Pope. There is not a lot that can be found in the S.J. McKee archives that pertain specifically to Pope Manitoba, but I am able to source some basic information about the rural community and the history of its development. So it says right here that Pope is in an area of the municipality called the Scotia District, uh, and this area was largely settled by people from Scotland. Um, in the early 1900s, around 1905, the Grand Trunk Pacific Railway was started to come through the area. And by 1909, this is when we see Pope established as a community. And it was at this time that their railway station was built, really making them an important uh, community in this municipality. When seeking information, it is often best for a researcher to try to access primary sources. That is, documents that were written or created during the time that is being studied. These types of sources offer an inside view. I found a descendant of a former resident of Pope, Manitoba, Chloe Bornstein, who has told me she has some of her grandfather's photographs that she would be happy to share. So it looks like she has sent me several emails with lots of pictures, so this is really exciting. Uh, these will be pictures that I haven't seen before of Pope and maybe hopefully some of the people who live there, so I'm going to just print those off and we'll take a look. These images are fantastic. It's great to see visual evidence of the town that I haven't seen before. As a researcher, it is always exciting to come across primary sources. This looks like this would have been the construction of the grain elevator in Pope. And this would have been the grain elevator that we're seeing being constructed here. So this is the Security Elevator Company Limited. This is such a wonderful find. Seeing images of people who once lived in this rural community helped me to understand what life might have been like in Pope's early years. These are really sort of treats as a historian to get to look at because this is from someone's personal photo collection. So this isn't necessarily photos that everyone has seen uh, who's looking into the history of this community. After an hour's drive from Brandon, I've arrived at what is left of Pope. The Canadian National Railway established stations all along the line and in fact, they named them uh, after the letters of the alphabet. So starting west of Portis La Prairie, if you look at all the little stations that were there, they started A, B, C, D, and by the time they got to the letter P, they established Pope here. There isn't much left to see today, but even at its height, there wouldn't have been very much of this small rural community, other than a grocery store, a grain elevator, a blacksmith shop, and probably a few houses. I start my exploration of the site with the old Pope grocery store. So I'm thinking what probably it was is that this was the sort of the front of the building and this is where they would have had the store. And then the family who ran the store had their house or their residence in the back. This would have once been the heart of the community, but now the building is in an advanced state of dilapidation. Well, I think I know why the windows are broken. Somebody was probably target practicing at the windows. The first step in the, when these buildings start to deteriorate is when the roof starts to go. Once you get water coming in, you get snow in the wintertime, it makes things wet, the plaster starts to fall apart. When you get the windows broken, the animals can come in. You know, it's really when the building opens to the outside that it really starts to break apart. As I explore the site, it doesn't take long before I find more remnants of the past life of this deserted town. <laughs> There's a shingle off the old elevator. Yeah, so I think chances are there was a spur line that came in off the main line, probably came in along here, and I'm thinking the elevator probably stood somewhere right in here. There's a little rise in the land here 
that uh, it doesn't look natural. It's probably been built here. They would have built a bit of a rise leading up into the elevator so that the farmers with their wagons or with their trucks could drive up into the elevator and then discharge their grain. There are only two houses left standing at Pope. Now what's interesting about this house is that it's got a lot of concrete on the outside, almost like a, a pad on the outside. That's interesting. Oh yeah, here's here's looks like there's an open well right here. Wow. <laughs> Boy, that's dangerous. There's just an open well with just a little piece of rotten plywood over top of it. We'll have to watch the step. Don't want to fall in that. Oh, there's a microwave in here. So it probably dates it a little bit. This house would have probably been occupied at least into the 1970s, possibly the 1980s. Pope was a creation of the railway, and once it was no longer necessary to have a community every few miles along the railway, that was the end of Pope.